Same green logos and the main theme is pitched up another half step from Reloaded. Apparently all this yellow light that looks like the Machine City is actually the Big Bang, which makes sense, just a bunch of energy, and getting some real hackers traveling through the internet vibes. I'd like to run another search through the Matrix. For what? For Neo. How could he be in the Matrix, sir? He's not plugged in. The Believer. Dude never gives up. I thank the good Oracle for that, am I right? <laughs> so we find out in the end that she's like a program that can control the sun or something? Look, I can only assume all the questions I have will be answered in Resurrections. Questions like, how come in the last 20 years we've all aged like weathered garden gnomes and Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss continue to be total smoke shows? Ha. Limbo. I kind of feel like this is the recycle bin, right? Like Neo is trapped there, he can't get out, he's prepared for deletion, but he can be restored by the train man. Eh? Or it's like a partition drive on the server. I don't think they thought it through this much. I wish there was an easy way to get through this, but there ain't. This is rough. The original actress who played the Oracle, Gloria Foster, sadly died before she could finish the trilogy. And there's no great way to address that, but we can all agree there's no easy way to get through it. He is trapped in a place between this world and the machine world. See? Yeah, recycle bin. Or Cleveland? Seraph knows how to find the train, man. He'll go with you. Not gonna lie, pretty stoked Seraph gets to play this time around. Goodness, I apologize. Are we sure this guy isn't the Ray of Sunshine program? Just a sweetie. You do not understand. I just have never heard a program speak of love. It is a human emotion. No, it is a word. I love my daughter very much. Aw, that's bizarrely sincere and moving. I bet Rama and Guy would get along. What if the train goes to life itself? Also, just in case you thought Rama Contra was a lion, we did see him in the last movie. I know you. Yes, in the restaurant of the Frenchman. Tasty wheat! Aw, mouse. Trinity? More like flippity. Flip it, flippinity. Flip, press, shut up. Karma is a word, like love. A way of saying what I am here to do. I think there's something to be said for Neo's tactics being changed after meeting Sati and Ramakandra. The idea that programs could have feelings hadn't occurred to him. I imagine bargaining with King Baby wasn't something that had dawned on him prior. So in that way, Sati is pretty dang important. Now your eye make the threats. An expectation subversion I've always hated. Definitely thought Neo was gonna mess him up. Shit. Huh, Trin said that that one time. Man, I get it, Pac-Manning over the edge would be annoying. Holy shit. One of those lines that I never caught, but that's the first confirmation that Seraph was one of the Seraphim from the Eden Matrix, the first perfect one. And they must have nicknamed him Wingless after he joined the Merovingians crew. After murdering a bunch of minimum wage security guards in the first Matrix, this whole set piece is a nice change up since these guys are presumably monsters from the Nightmare Matrix. Ha! <laughs> it's the hell button. Good way to keep your secret floor secret as long as no one ever needs help. Honestly, an upside down action scene is such a great idea, I'm surprised more people haven't blatantly ripped it off. It'd be something I had to my movie at its inception. <laughs> hey, they upgraded the graphics for the cheat codes. She can land it now. Morpheus' is H and K MP5Ks, that's all. Again, I like that they use the same moves. It makes sense. If I'm using Eddie Gordo, which I am, I'm spamming the wheel kick cartwheel move that my brother could never block. Wait, no, he, he did that to me. And then obviously finishing it up with my signature move. That like misty flip with both feet in the air. I never learned the names of the moves. Is this relatable? Second three references? Are we sure Trina isn't the one? She just embedded that dude into a concrete wall. Teamwork? The prodigal child returns. L'ange sans ses ailes. And there you have it. The angel without his wings. You have fought through hell to do so. The subtitles spell it hell, like the underworld. So it's all coming into focus now. Put down the guns and I will promise you a safe passage out of here. All three of us. Spoken like a guy who's dealt with the devil before. Or Hades, I said focus, not transparency. It is said they cannot be taken. Bring me the eyes of the oracle and I will give you back your savior. There's a very fetch quest feeling about Reloaded and we were just about to embark on another. So I like the change up to have Trinity say, nah, not this time. Trin gets the best lines. I don't have time for this shit. Lady just wants to feel something. Oh, I love that smooth movement, then complete stillness from Trinity as a million guns are pointed at her. She'll do it. If she has to, she'll kill every one of us. She's in love. There's always been something very vampiric about Persephone and Merv, but especially in this one, which is deliberate. And one thing that really plays into it is that all is forgiven from the last movie. When you've been together for hundreds, a thousand years at this point, you learn to just move on. Betrayals like this are just another blip. Their role playing is probably overthrowing entire countries. But also I'm starting to realize that Persephone's kink might be love? Let's see, what else can we say about Monica Bellucci? 
Uh, in Greek mythology, Hades kidnapped Persephone and brought her down to the underworld, so that checks out. I like her dress, it's very red. And it's got lime green trim, I always thought that was a nice touch. Holy cow, the Merovingian is in this scene. <laughs> Never noticed that before. Time's up. What's it gonna be, Merv? I just don't think Trinity could be any cooler. Hugging and love. Was hoping to have these done before you got here. Oh, well. I guess you can't track them with cookies this time. Why didn't you tell me about Zion and the ones before me? Why didn't you tell me the truth? Mostly because it wasn't written yet, but like also he wouldn't have believed it or it wouldn't have meant anything to him. Much like the Matrix itself, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. That know thyself sign was really the Ted Lasso believe sign of the early aughts. I believe in belief. You should be dead. But apparently you weren't ready for that either. I like the idea that Neo is alive strictly because he hadn't prepared enough to die. Is that, was that an option for me? I'm not ready to die. That's his purpose, to balance the equation. Yeah, I know a big purple guy who felt similarly. And if you can't find the answer, then I'm afraid there may be no tomorrow for any of us. Smith. In hindsight, that's the Oracle's way of telling him he needs to sacrifice himself one way or another. I guess maybe he or she thought if he could defeat Smith, it's possible the machines would let him go, but they've been waiting to get him back to the source. It seems like a foregone conclusion. Everything that has a beginning has an end. Unless you call your movie Rebirth, or Reincarnations, or, oh, Resurrections. He is you. You're opposite, you're negative. <gasps> Negasca, I mean Neganeo. The future of both worlds will be in your hands, or in his. We all know the super burly brawl is coming, but we haven't talked about Smith much yet. So this is a quality way to remind us and get us hyped up. Can I come back? I would like to come back. I would like that too. Then I'll see you tomorrow. I guess she is powerful if she can predict the future. The all-knowing Oracle is never surprised. So can she be? She knows everything. But if that's true, then why is she here if she knew I was coming? That's a good place to start, Smith. Really think it through, bruh. <laughs> Yes. Here for Unhinged Smith. You are a bastard. You would know, Mom. Oof. Sunburn. <laughs> Sunburn. Another fun detail I never noticed before, you can see the oracle grow taller in the chair. <laughs> Hugo Weaving doesn't even care, and man is he always a win. Yeah, definitely. You're right about that, sir. I feel like Bane Smith is channeling Neo's first interrogation here. And if Neo was here for this meeting, he'd recognize that cadence immediately. How did you know about that? The Oracle. What did she tell you? Well, I mean, that depends on whether you pick Niobe or Ghost and enter the Matrix. If you're up to me, Counselor, I take every man, woman, and child, put a gun in their hand, and march them straight into that duck. Perhaps it is best that it is not up to you. Sucks to be Locke. No one wants him making decisions. Then I am grateful that it is not up to you. But we can hope. I'm afraid hope is an indulgence I don't have time for. But he does get some great lines that ground the true believers in the audience and make the cynical realists snort in satisfaction. What's up? pod -born pencil neck like you doing volunteering for my call. More Matrix slurs. Copper top, now pod -born pencil neck? He can't help the girth of his neck? Come on, is that Smith in the feed? I have to try. Is this what the Oracle has told you? No. See what I mean about this being the adult and death movie? Mommy ain't in charge no more. Although technically I guess he's still listening to her. I expect just what I've always expected, for you to make up your own damn mind. But the point stands. Two ships, two directions. Sounds like Providence, doesn't it, Morpheus? Aw, these two are really starting to appreciate each other again. I do not see coincidence. I see Providence. You've never believed in the one. I believe in him. Love it. And it's in line with who we've seen Niobe be so far. It wouldn't be very safe for me here, would it? Of course, it might not be very safe for you either. Well, you can take the agent out of the Matrix, but you can't take the cringe out of the agent. I knew it the moment you said you had to leave. I could see it in your face, just like you knew the moment you looked at me, that I was coming with you. I like that he doesn't argue with her this time. Finally understands that they all have a part to play, and Trins is with him. I'm scared, Trin. So am I. And a bit of vulnerability never hurt, even with superhumans. It was an honor, sir. No, the honor is still mine. This goodbye stings a tad more than the rest, but who knows? Maybe Lana and Lawrence are playing a long con here. I should have known you sent his first. Whoa there, Smithy. Your new human side is showing. Like, I just highly doubt that Agent Smith ever considered Trinity's sex. I think we can handle one little girl. No, Lieutenant, your men are already dead. Agents don't curse. But I guess if they did, it's pretty on point that they'd start with misogyny. Every time I was sure we had you, but somehow you'd slip through our fingers. What are you talking about? 
I love how Bane is like, I'm Smith, I'm Smith, I'm Smith. And everyone refuses to believe him because it makes absolutely no sense to them. But to us, aha, to us, it makes perfectly no sense. I'm just messing. This isn't any less believable than anything else. If your actual consciousness is uploaded and exists in only one place at a time, once it's altered or copied over, sending it back to your body would rewrite your brain. In a universe where Kung Fu is a digital upload, Smith can enter the world of the real. And Redshirt Nurse even explains the physical processes. Some cross-synaptic firing as well as signs of recent trauma, with fresh fibrotic scarring throughout the cortex. Get him. Mr. Anderson. Wow, dude, still calling him that? Not cool, my guy. Now we know you're doing it on purpose. Not cool. It's impossible. Not impossible. Inevitable. You know, when you land on a catchphrase, you should stick with it. Anyway, love how brutal, raw, and unhinged this fight is. You can feel the pain in a way that isn't present inside the Matrix, especially compared to the one coming, which is between the same guys. This movie is just Neo versus Smith fights, isn't it? What? But Neo's the hero. Gutsy move, Wachowskis. And I love it. I can see you. And it's a little slower, but he still knows Kung Fu, even outside the Matrix. Ooh, brutal. Love the way his code disintegrates. Even if Neo didn't pulverize Bane's head, he did enough damage to his brain that Smith's code breaks down. I think you're gonna have to drive. Classic Neo. If we have to give these bitches our lives, we give him hell before we do! I'll probably regret saying this, but Mafuni's speech and these mechs make me wish I had an army of squid machines to fight. Oh well. It's more likely to be car assembly robot arms or something. You keep loading, I keep shooting. Uh, Chara, I have some bad news for you. It's always such a fun payoff when someone's skills have been established and then we get to see it in action. Oh, I I could do that. Smart to have squids just flying around the Giger drill like flares pulling fire. Right though, it's Giger-esque. The joke is, why would the Squiddy spread the attack out? And while it could have worked, the APUs are way better at dealing with a handful of Sentinels, and this cluster and sacrifice the ones in front is a proven method for them, stolen right from Ender, by the way. Take this. Nice. Ooh, that's a cool shot. Kinda hard to imagine the amount of ammo they're going through, but that gives you a glimpse. Lol. Nope. Not Doc Ock trying to kill them. For real, Raimi, that you? That's a mechanical line. No one can pilot mechanic. Way to know you're a lady. Maybe something should change. We blow an EMP inside there, we'll lose the dock. Sir, we already lost the dock. You're lucky he's not a Vader type leader, or you'd be choking on your own tongue right now. Dear woman, you can drive. Finally, some respect. <laughs> As a character barely introduced in the last movie, Mufuni is a badass. How could people not love this movie? I knew their little fingies creeped me out for a reason. I didn't finish the train. Grizzled veterans passing the baton to the unprepared newbie is action movie catnip for me. I love it. I want more of it. That is feather. Oh man, the kid's too pure. I honestly, can't believe he makes it. Neo, I believe. It's kind of sweet that he's still doing it for Neo. A little, a little obsessive, but still sweet. Ah, the EMP, the best and worst thing at all times. Get you a Faraday cage is all I'm saying. Save the dock, Captain. And just handed it to him on a silver platter. Locke is the Debbie Downer in the group, and it's a total bummer, but can you blame him? He's been pretty spot on so far, and the fact that he's kept any of his cool is impressive. Your move. As long as there is a single breath in his body, he will not give up. I like this change in Morpheus. His fanaticism for the prophecy has turned into faith in his friends. Something you could argue we got from Niobe. Even Morpheus is in the adult phase. No matter how many times you see it, that's gonna be an unsettling sight. I can feel them. And see them, sort of burying the coolest part of the lead there, Neo. Commander, do you think that we have any chance of surviving? If I were you, Counselor, I wouldn't ask me that question. See, that's military for if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. If you tell me we'll make it, I'll believe you. We'll make it. We is doing a lot of work there. And yet, are they encased in ice because they haven't had to use these ships in like 100 years? And is one of them called the Charlotte and is Benjamin Gates about to show up in another crossover we deserve? This is weird, but according to the screenplay, this is basically what Neo is experiencing when the Sentinel tries to disconnect him from the source. Oof, brutal. You can see the rebar spearing Trinity back out of her seat. I've gone as far as I can. What? I think we all let out a nervous laugh with that shot. He's just so jacked up and he had no idea and it's a total bummer and whatever plot device they use in Resurrections to bring her back, I'm totally 100% on board. I can't, but without you. Yes, you can. I wish I had one more chance to say what really mattered. To say how much I loved you. And no one thought a Matrix movie was gonna make me cry. And really, first time through in theaters, I couldn't believe Trinity died. And watching it now, yeah, still can't believe it. Hard nope. A little Tower of the Eye bada doer imagery here, which technically means Lord of the Rings ripped off Revolutions. Larry? Oh no, it's the Gerber baby. 
But isn't that what every sinner says before they accept the power of the one true smith killing Neo? And if you fail, I won't. Self-confidence. I know we're all supposed to connect with Neo, but Smith basically made my idea of the perfect matrix. No people, rain, seven billion Hugo weavings. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> this Smith. Duel of the Fates? Psh, I'll take Neo Damarung any day of the week. That's, that's not true, but I really like this piece. You know it, I know it. Final fights in the rain are always a win, and the sheer volume of rain in this one is something to behold. Haha, <laughs> Wade would be cheering on Neo and laughing and pointing at Smith. Well, that was specific rim levels of cool, as long as they don't do it again. And look, after the highway chase and even the burly brawl, I understand that they didn't know where to go, but up. To me, the idea of this fight is more symbolic than anything. Also, these two just love wailing on each other. But it actually has some really fun moments. Neo's spring off the wall, Smith's fun little dust tornado. It was a ride in theaters. The purpose of life is to end. I mean, obviously he's wrong. Living is the purpose of life. But some might say that living would be pretty meaningless without death. Still got it. Where's his comrade Morpheus to cheer him on? <laughs> got him in the throat again. When these two actors were 10 years old, you think either of them ever thought they'd be in something this cool? Their 10 year old selves have got to be freaking out. I've seen Hugo weaving in plenty of movies and I'm used to what his face looks like, but there's something so unnerving about Smith without glasses. Like it's part of his program and we're not supposed to see him without them. Guys, what did I say? Okay, I'm still into it. They do shatter a crap load of glass this time. Badass good guy. Okay, that one was pretty dope too. The way the water hits maximum force and then starts falling, making the bubble collapse. And gotta say it, badass bad guy. Apparently this is the same phone booth Neo called the machines from at the end of the Matrix, I guess. So I guess he ended the war right where he declared it. Feeble human intellect trying to justify an existence that is without meaning or purpose. We do do that, don't we? But really I can't help but love how pissed off Smith gets about it all. It's been his problem from day one, he just really doesn't like humans. Why Mr. Anderson, why, why do you persist? Because I choose to. Choice, the only real superpower humans have. One last slow-mo smack and oh, is it epic. Each raindrop frozen, unable to move out of the way, just like Richard Spencer's face. Who's next? This is my world, my world! Just doesn't even care. Yo, he's holding that lightning for the punch. Everything that has a beginning has an end, Neo. We finally learned Neo's name. What did I just say? Oh, no, this isn't right, this can't be. You thought you could actually overtake the Oracle, you fool of a took. Everything that has a beginning has an end. So just so it's clear, what happens here is that after all his posturing with the architect, Neo ended up going back to the source after all. The bonus to them is that with Smith copying his code over Neo's, Deus Ex Machina had the ability to delete or reintegrate both codes at once. You can hear the same sound of Smith and Neo screaming when Smith tries to paste himself onto Neo and reload it. Neo got to be Matrix Jesus twice. Look, if the cross coming out of his chest didn't make it clear to you, I got nothing for you. War is over, sir. The war is over. If you want it. Is this real? Mm, it depends who you talk to. So after Neo destroys Smith, all the lights in the Machine City change from red to green, as well as Corner Bot 3000 here with green eyes. Huh. Wonder where his body is going. Sequel, I guess. My favorite thing about this ending is when the Matrix reboots this time, the green color grade is gone. Now, based on Resurrections, trailers... Well, no spoilers, but at least from this vantage point, it seems like they were planning a different kind of matrix, maybe with less oppression. Just how long do you think this peace is going to last? As long as it can. So like 18 years, give or take? I have your word. What do you think I am? Human? Machine burn. Did you do that? I guess Sati found a purpose after all? Again, questions I assume will be answered later. Will we ever see him again? Someday. Late December, 2021, perhaps? Just taking a guess. Reloaded and Revolutions are both movies I've always enjoyed. Based on your reaction so far, I'm not alone in that. If anything, I think the one thing this movie suffered from was a tad too much real world stuff. Ships flying through narrow corridors is fun, but it goes on a little long for me. And there's just less Matrix time in general, especially from Neo. In fact, Neo doesn't enter the Matrix until the final 27 minutes, and even then it's no longer our Matrix. It doesn't look like our world, which as one of those special boys who like to pretend he was humanity's savior, gotta look like our world for me to insert myself. Don't worry, I still managed. As is usual after a video, you all comment stuff that I hadn't considered or just didn't fully articulate, and while usually it's a part one, part two thing, this movie is kind of a part two, so let's talk about some of them. You all had a similar take on why agents could dodge bullets and not fists because of the predictability of a shot fired from a gun, which is a cool thought. If I expanded on it, it would be that there's no such thing as a gun that isn't an actual piece of code in the matrix, so the second the hammer comes down or the firing pin hits the primer, there's only one direction the bullet can go, and the actual program of the matrix knows this, therefore the agents know too. 
Interesting. Another thing is the rubbery look of the Burly Brawl is because the program is having a hard time loading in all the models. And now Neo and Smith are both moving faster than the game engine and graphics cards can handle, and it's like turning off textures so it can render in real time. Also fun. I'm probably not blowing your mind by saying that this trilogy is about fate versus choice. Reloaded does a lot of the heavy lifting while this one is more about the outcomes of those choices or fate coming to fruition depending on your outlook. The thing I love most about what the Wachowskis did was to truly not answer the question unless you consider, yes, all of it, both an answer, which I do. We are presented with a bunch of different figures in this movie who all have different thoughts on predestination or determinism and free will or choice. Let's start with Morpheus, the true believer. The prophecy of the one is everything for him, and when he finds out it wasn't entirely accurate, it turns him upside down. The first movie is all about him convincing Neo to believe. The Merovingian is obsessed with causality. This sort of goes both ways. We make choices that have consequences, but to the Merovingian, the choices were unavoidable and may have well been pre-written. So ultimately, he believes choice doesn't matter because we can't help ourselves because of those in power. And depending on how you look at it, his point was either proven right this time, the cause, him delaying Neo's return, and the effect, Trinity doing this, or he's missing that Trinity's free will led to an outcome he didn't foresee. The Oracle is the embodiment of choice. It's her entire thing. In fact, it's the reason she's introduced into the Matrix. It's a little confusing and ironic because her game is telling people she already knows what they're going to do before they do it, but she truly believes that just because you can see the choice being made doesn't mean it was any less of a choice, and without understanding the choices, the future is uncertain, the outcome of the choice is unknown. That feels like almost as much gobbledygook as her explanation, but I think you get the point. Then we have the architect, who as the wordiest of them all, actually has the least complicated outlook. No decisions are actually made, it's all pre-written by the lines of code that make us up, our DNA. Choice is entirely an illusion because we're all just following a linear path to our destination pulled to and fro by chemical reactions in our brains. Even as he's surprised by Neo's responses, he still sees Neo as a slave to his biology, emotions, and therefore lacks free will. The irony of his outlook is that he seemed to have completely missed that Smith was slowly destroying the Matrix because of a choice Neo made after his resurrection, and the Oracle couldn't see beyond Smith's decision to paste himself onto her because Smith didn't understand his own choice. Smith thinks purpose is what drives us, which again falls somewhere in the middle, but his catchphrase is, it is inevitable. yet he had no clue why he was making the choices he made. He literally never does. He thought he did, but with his final choice, he destroyed himself. The architect would say, yeah, duh, it was always going to happen that way since he was the inverse of Neo, and the Oracle would say he made choices without understanding them and the outcome was different than literally anyone expected. The way in which which Neo beat Smith is simple in hindsight, but no one knew how this would end. Not even the big baby-faced Deus Ex Machine King knew that was the solution. Otherwise, he would have said, okay, cool, go lose, get copied, and I'll delete him. Like I said earlier, there is no answer at the end of this trilogy. Neo is the one, his choices saved humanity, but also just about everything the Oracle said would happen, happened. So which is it? Yes, both. The point is that even if it's all pre-written, we still have a responsibility to make the best possible choices at all times because it does matter. I'm really excited to see where they go with Resurrections. There's plenty that can still be done with this world and these characters. And let's be honest, no one is going to complain about more Keanu. Next week, a fun, lighthearted one to close out this year. After all these years, to be going back to where it all started. Back to the Matrix. Whoa.